By the end of this video, what we want you to know is how to solve a quadratic system of equations. So before we solve any quadratic system of equations, let's just go back and remember what a system of equations is. So this is your nostalgia. We're going to go down memory lane, back to algebra 1, and we're just going to remember how to, uh, what a system of equations was and how you solved it. So if you take a look at these, this is what you solved in algebra 1. You used it again in geometry. And what the goal was was to take two equations. In this case, both of these are linear equations, which means when you graph each of these equations, you're going to get a line, right? So in this case, what we did was we used the substitution method. We said the first equation told me what y equals. I went and found y. I substituted. And then my goal was to eventually get an x and a y, right? Uh, we find an x equals, we find a y equals, and that's a point, right? So I'm not going to actually do it for this particular problem. This is something that you should know how to do. But what I want to remind you is what could happen when we solve each of these equations. So usually what happens, okay, let me get my line tool because we're going to draw some lines, right? Is when I draw two lines on a coordinate plane, they usually cross at one spot. And that one spot is going to be my answer. So for example, in this particular problem, if I were to graph these two equations, right, uh, the lines that I get cross at one spot. And in this case, that spot looks like it's the point negative two, positive two. I'm sorry, negative one positive 2. So I'd say like this is my x negative 1 and this is my y positive 2. So that's the possibility is that I could get one solution, right? The second possibility is that maybe these lines don't cross at all. Maybe they're parallel lines, right? So I could get this situation where I'm getting two parallel lines they never cross, and in that case I would say there's no solution to this, right? The third possibility is maybe when I write the two equations, I'm actually writing the equation of the same line. So when I graph these, I'm actually going to graph the same line twice, and they're going to overlap everywhere. And I'm going to say, this is all solutions. Every solution to one equation is a solution to, e to the other. right? So that's what we called infinitely many solutions. So when we did system of equations with lines, we said there's three possibilities. There's one solution if they cross at one spot. There's no solutions if they don't cross at all. And there are infinitely many solutions uh, if they cross everywhere, if they happen to be the same line, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, what happens if one of these is not a line anymore, but it's a parabola? Because now we know how to graph and use parabolas. So here's what we're going to look at today. A linear quadratic system is a system where one of the equations is linear and the other equations is a parabola, right? So one's a line, one's a parabola. And here are our possibilities now. If I draw a line in a parabola, it's possible that they might cross at two spots, right? So in this particular case, I'm saying it's crossing down here, and it's crossing again, right? So it's kind of going through the parabola, hitting a spot, going through and hitting again. So we get actually two solutions again. It's also possible that maybe the line just grazes the parabola at one spot, right? And it's also possible that maybe they miss each other completely. Maybe the line is up here and the parabola turns and starts heading back down before we ever get there. So when we're solving, a linear quadratic system, we're kind of getting that same situation happening. Maybe there's two solutions, maybe there's one solution, maybe there's no solutions. Right? So we're going to take a look and see, uh, at some problems and see what, what that looks like when we're actually doing the solving. Okay? So here's your first problem. If I ask you to solve the system of equations, it's the same concept that we did with two linear equations. We're going to say this first equation is saying what y equals, the second equation is showing me a y, that means that I can plug negative x squared plus 5x plus 6 anywhere that I see a y in the second equation. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say negative x squared plus 5x plus 6, that was the y, equals x plus 6. Okay. So I just substituted from the first equation into the second one. This is now a quadratic equation that I can solve. So you can use any of your solving methods to solve this quadratic equation. I'm going to move all of the stuff on the left over to the right because my goal is always to try to get a nice positive x squared. That make my life easier, especially if I want to try factoring. So I'm going to add x squared over. So it's going to look like uh, x squared. When I subtract the 5x over, it's going to be x minus 5x. Well, that's minus 4x. Okay? And then 6 minus 6 is 0, so that won't show up at all. Okay? So when I subtract or move these three terms over, this is what I get. And so now it's we're, we're trying to wonder, okay, how do I solve something like this? Well, this is a factorable expression. This has a GCF of x. So I'm going to say this is the same as x times x minus 4 equals 0. And if I can find factors and their product equals 0, then either of the expressions, either of the factors must be 0. So here's a factor. x could be equal to 0. 
Or, here's the other factor, x minus 4 might be equal to 0. So I'm going to get two x values out of this. It looks like I'm going to get an x value of 0. Okay, That's the one that's already written. Or I could get the x value of 4. Okay, So I have two x values. Okay, But if you remember from our last problem, or even just looking at the last picture, okay, when we talk about solutions to systems, we're actually talking about points. And a point is an x and a y together. So each of these x's has their own y value, which means I have to go back and plug both of these values in. So when I plug a 0 in, this is probably the easier one. If I plug in a 0 into this first equation, it's going I'm sorry, the second equation, it's going to look like y equals 0 plus 6. So when I plug in a 0, I get back a y value of 6. So that's the y value that goes here. Okay? That's a pair. Okay? The second one when I uh, graph it, I'm sorry, when I plug it back in, Okay, I'm going to plug in a 0 right here, okay, and it's going to say y is equal to 4 plus 6. Okay? Well, 4 plus 6 is 10, so it looks like when I plug in a 4, now I got a 10. So this x value of 4 gives me a y value of 10. So I'm actually going to get two solutions out of this, the point 0, 6 and the point 4, 10. And those are the answers to my problem. So if you notice, it was really just set these two expressions equal to each other, and then solve them in whatever quadratic way you know how. Okay. So if you take a look at the next problem, um, I'm asking you to do the same thing. I'm just expressing it in a different way. I'm saying if f of x is a quadratic, if g of x is uh, a linear equation, when is f of x equal to g of x? Well, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set f of x equal to g of x. Okay. So same concept. Okay. It equals x plus 7. I'm going to set it equal to 0, because this looks like something I'm either going to factor or quadratic formula. They both have to be equal to 0. So when I set this equal to 0, it's 3x squared plus 4x minus 1 equals 0. Okay? If I try to factor this problem, if I try to find numbers that multiply to positive 4, I'm sorry, that add up to positive 4, that multiply to negative 3, they don't exist. Okay? I'm not going to do this one, but if you were to solve this one, you're going to have to use the quadratic formula. Right? So you could try this out, use the quadratic formula. Again, you should get two x values that are probably going to be decimals, and then you're going to have to plug those x values back in to get y. So if you have any questions about this one, this is something you can bring to class with you, and I'm happy to finish this for you in class. Okay? So I want to look at some of the other cases. Here's another problem. Okay? So same idea. It's saying solve the system here are, as a quadratic and here is a linear equation. So I'm saying, okay, I can go right here where I see a y, and I can plug in what y equals. That's this big expression here. So it's going to look like 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 is equal to x minus 2. Okay, so I'm going to subtract over and add over and set it equal to 0. Now it looks like 2x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. All right, so let's try this one out. Okay, I'm going to use the quadratic formula again. This does not factor. Again, I'll let you try that out on your own, but it doesn't factor. Okay, so I'm going to say this is 4 plus or minus the square root of. Let's go do b squared minus 4ac over here. Well, b squared would be negative 4 squared, which is 16 minus 4 times 2 times 3. Okay, this says 16 minus 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. It looks like I'm going to get a negative 8 out of this problem all over 2 times 2, which is 4. So in this case, I am not going to get a real number out of this. I'm going to get a complex number. This is going to be an imaginary number, right? We're going to have to bring i out of our problem. So in this case, it's, if I were to graph these, if you want to see the picture of what these look like, this is a situation where the parabola and the line never cross each other. So I'm going to say there is no solution to this system of equations. Okay? No solution means that the, there's no intersection point where the line and the parabola cross each other. Right? So if you ever try to solve the quadratic and you get an, a negative number under a radical and your answer is going to be an imaginary number or a complex number, you're going to say there's no solution. That's our second possibility. So we could have two solutions. We could have no solution. So let's take a look at the last one. Maybe we're going to have one solution. So let's see one solution happening. So again, take the 7x plus 5. I'm going to plug it in right here. Okay, So it's going to look like 7x plus 5 equals x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay. I'm going to subtract these two over to the right. Again, I want to try to keep x squared positive. So now it looks like 0 equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. Okay, So let me see if I can factor this. This looks kind of factorable. So if I can find numbers that multiply to 1 that add up to negative 2, I can factor this. And in fact, they do exist. It's x minus 1 times x minus 1. Okay. 
these numbers multiply to 1, and they add up to negative 2. That's good. So if you notice, I'm getting a repeating factor, which means I can only say that there's one uh, unique x value, and that is when x is equal to 1. So I'm only going to get one x value. When I go back and plug in that x value, I'm going to find y is equal to 7 times 1 plus 5. Well, that's just 7 plus 5. That's 12. Okay. So this is a, a situation where I tried to solve this system. I only got one unique x value out of it, which means I'm only going to get one unique y value to go with it, and there's only one solution to this one, and it's the point 1, 12.